Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord, Jesus has the victory. We all have a call, a call to greatness, a desire for it. We want to do something good. Now is your time. You could change the world, and the world needs changing. So get busy. Shalom World, God's own channel. A very warm welcome to all the viewers of Shalom World Television to this talk series. My name is Jensen Joseph. I currently live in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I have a beautiful wife and three young children. In this next series of talks, maybe four or five, I will be focusing on the theme, holiness in the family life. In this talk number four, I want to talk about discuss how understanding the will of God will help us grow in holiness. The Pew Research Center recently did a study where basically they said that there is 50% divorce among Catholic families and there is 50% divorce in non-Catholic families. Another study that they did revealed this fact. They did a study on the use of pornography, porn, in Christian communities and in non-Christian communities. And they discovered that the ratio of people who use porn in Christian communities and non-Christian communities was basically the same. What story are these two findings telling us? that in today's society, the gap between Christians and non-Christians is becoming narrower and narrower. It's basically hard to tell the difference between a Christian person and a non-Christian person. And so, because of this, you know, we know that the, the negative effect is the breakdown of families. So that is why I want to focus this talk on holiness in the family life. The root cause of the problems in many families is the failure to understand God's will for me in the family life. What is God's will? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, it says, St. Paul says like this, this is the will of God, your holiness. St. Paul does not say that the will of God is my wife's holiness, my husband's holiness, or my children's holiness. St. Paul says, this is the will of God, your holiness. And when we look at this statement, we realize that it is basically the misunderstanding of this statement is what is uh, causing many of the problems in the families. Because uh, today in many families, husbands or wives feel that, the husband feels that my responsibility is to fix my wife. Or the wife feels that my res her responsibility is to fix her husband. And basically, what is happening is the mantra, the, 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 the song or the chant in many families is, it is your fault, your fault, your fault. The husband is looking at the wife and saying, your fault, your fault. Wife is looking at doing likewise, looking at the husband. Or the parents are looking at the children, or the children are looking at the parents and saying, your fault, your fault. Nobody is ready to say, my fault, my fault. We know that in the Catholic Mass, we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault. Through my fault, through my fault. See, this is the, the, this should be the chant of a person rooted in the Christian faith. But in many families today, the chant is your fault, your fault. And so in, in many families, the members of the family are, are spending a lot of energy and effort to the point of breaking, trying to fix the other person because they feel that the will of God is for them to fix 
the other in the family, your holiness. They forget the fact that the scriptures says, it is my holiness that God desires first, my holiness. That's why Paul, Saint Paul looks at us and says, your holiness. Now, where does this tendency of your fault, your fault come from? When we look at the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned, God approaches them and says, what have you done? Why did you eat of the tree of which I had forbidden you? And Adam looks at God and says, the woman that you put here, she gave me the fruit and so I ate. So basically what Adam did when he sinned was he blamed two people. One was he blamed God for giving him his wife Eve and, and who caused him who gave him the apple and so he ate. So he blamed God that he gave him Eve who caused him to sin and then he blamed Eve for giving him the apple to eat. So basically the nature of sin is to blame the other, not to call attention to one's, uh, one's own responsibility as it relates to the sin. We know that again, because of this attitude, husbands and wives spend a lot of energy trying to justify themselves or parents and children, and the breakdown of the family happens. We even see this attitude when people attend retreats. Sometimes in today's society, when we attend retreats and we are listening to a uh, powerful talk, because of our attitude that our responsibility is to fix the other, we many times hear talks. And rather than hear, hearing God's voice speaking to me personally, uh, addressing the, the things I need to change in my life, we have the attitude that, you know what? My wife needs to hear that. My husband needs to hear that. My children needs to hear that. And so this is the attitude that we carry even in spiritual environments, such as a retreat. Psalm 32 verses three to five says as follows. As long as I would not speak, my bones wasted away with my groaning all the day. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me my strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledge my sins to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord and you took away the guilt of my sin. And basically the psalmist is reminding us that as long as we deny the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to confess our sins to the Lord, the burden, the guilt of the sin weighs down on us. And it basically begins to eat away the health of our spirituality. But the moment we acknowledge that it is my fault, my fault, my greatest fault, and we confess our sins to the Lord, God takes away that guilt and shame that is putting the burden on us and our spirituality begins to flourish. You know, in, um, so basically what we do is when we fail to confess our sins, we play the blame game. We try to put the blame on the other. And this is what is happening in many families and the root cause of them breaking down because of the blame game that is being played out. In Luke chapter 18, verses nine to 14, Jesus talks about the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee and the tax collector went to, went to pray. And the Pharisee prayed like this, Oh God, I thank you that I am not like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I tithe, I, I follow the, I obey the rules and the laws, uh, and I'm not like this tax collector or like a prostitute. And basically he justified himself before God. But the tax collector would not even lift up his eyes toward heaven. But he beat his breast and he said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus told the apostles that the latter, the tax collector went home justified, not the Pharisee. So basically, what is God's will for us? God's will for us is our holiness, my holiness. And the, one of the ways for me to grow in holiness is to confess my faults, confess my faults, not to confess the faults of my wife or my husband or my children, but to confess my own faults. That is the, one of the ways that we can grow in holiness in the family life. 
Because when we confess our own, own faults, Jesus says that we are justified. In other words, uh, basically we are moving along the path of righteousness. James, uh, in the book of James chapter 5, the apostle James says, confess your sins to one another, pray for one another that you may be healed. In other words, when the husband and wife are willing to confess their own faults to the Lord, if their relationship is broken, that brokenness will be healed because they are doing the very act of holiness, of growing in holiness. It is confession of their faults. And, uh, and Saint uh, James says that uh, once the healing happens, basically then he says in the next statement that the prayer of a righteous person, the fervent prayer of a righteous person is very powerful. And so what he's saying is that when a person confesses their sins, they are growing in righteousness, they are justified, and basically they are growing in righteousness. And when they are growing in righteousness, it means they are growing in holiness. And when they are growing in holiness, the prayers that they make, that they offer to the Lord are powerful. It bears fruit. And that is why also Joshua says, uh, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will work wonders among you. In other words, when we take the time to ask ourselves, what is out of order in my life? What are the things in my life that I need to change? And we spend a good amount of energy and time doing that. The Lord will do miracles in our lives tomorrow. In other words, things that we thought will never happen will become possible because the Lord honors a person's commitment to the personal confession of his or our fault. The Lord loves that and he desires more than ever to hear that. He is not looking for the husband to confess the faults of his wife. He is not looking for the uh, wife to confess the faults of her husband. He is not looking for the children to confess the faults of their parents or the parents of the children. He is looking for each and every person to confess their own faults. Because in the, in the manner of doing that, in the, in, the, in, in the process of doing that, the Lord is willing to justify us. He is willing to heal us. He is willing to restore us to full spiritual health. And He acknowledges that we are on the path of righteousness. And when we grow in righteousness or holiness, Whatever prayers we offer to God on behalf of ourselves or others bear fruit. They are powerful. They will be heard. And we know that the saints understood this perfectly. Because when you look at the life of the saints, they spent a lot of energy and time looking at what is it in their life that they could correct rather than looking at or calling out the faults of others. Because, and, and, and the thing is that they spend so much time, because we, we, we have read about St. John Paul the Great, or Mother Teresa, or other saints like that, who used to conf go to confession frequently, as of often as uh, once a week, or sometimes every day. And the question is, why would these people who are considered saints and holy, why would they need to go to confession so frequently? And the reason they did that is because they spend a lot of time analyzing their own life. For example, if John Paul II, when he was alive, if he was having a conversation with another priest or another person, at the end of the day, before he goes to bed, he used to do an examination of conscience. And in that examination, he would sense that during this conversation with another person, there was a moment where he felt irritated or angry. And he had this negative talk, thought. And because of his commitment to do that type of examination, uh, he would immediately be reminded of that negative thought. And he, and he would then be able to offer it to the Lord and, and confess that and ask forgiveness. And so basically in the process of that, Saint John Paul II and many other saints were very sensitive about each and every action in their life. And that sensitivity to the actions in their life, that sensitivity, that intense level of sensitivity to the sins that they committed, really is the, the key to them becoming holy. 
and them being able to uh, make such a powerful impact on the world. They were not interested or did not bother to spend their energy on calling out the faults of others. They called out, they confessed their own faults, and that's where they focused their energy. And because of that, God labeled them righteous. And because of that, they became holy. And because of that, the impact that they had on the world through their prayers while they were alive, and even now when they are in heaven, has an eternal impact. They not only impacted the people of their generation, but the, 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 the commitment to the daily confession of their faults, the commitment to the daily examination of their own mistakes, anointed them to make an eternal impact on the world. And today, even today, when many of them are no longer living in this world, but living in heaven, even today, people who are living in this world are receiving the graces of their life and their prayers before God. So this is the, uh, this is the power. This is, the, the, this is why understanding the will of God is very important, which helps us grow in holiness, especially in the context of family life. The will of God for the husband is not his wife's holiness. The will of God for the wife is not a husband's holiness. The will of God for the parents is not the children's holiness, or the will of God for the children is not the parent's holiness first. The will of God for each and every person is their own holiness. That comes first. And so we need to pay attention to this and, and holiness will take place uh, uh, through, it's, it begins with the confession, confession of one's own faults. So I pray today for our viewers and all the people who have been staying away from the sacrament of confession. I urge you, I pray for you that you will all realize the power of confessing your faults before the Lord. Because in that confession, the Lord will honor you. The Lord will heal you spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally. And the Lord will restore you to full spiritual health. The Lord will anoint you in such a way that your prayers will have an impact on the world, an eternal impact. So Lord Jesus, I pray that you may give this conviction to each and every person. The will of God for me is my holiness. And help me to realize, help each one of us to realize that the one of the ways that we can grow in holiness is through confession of our fault. So help us to confess our faults as often as we can and help us to be very sensitive to the actions in our life, especially to the sinful actions and help us not to wait to address that, uh, be, bring that before the Lord, but to confess it immediately and to receive his healing and, and cleansing. Uh, Mother Mary, pray for us and thank you for your intercession. In the name of the Father, Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. someone who's uh, used media a lot in evangelization, so I believe in the importance of Catholic radio, Catholic TV, Catholics using the new media. Can I encourage everyone to watch your home TV? I think it's a great vehicle of evangelization. And God bless all of you. Shalom World, God's own channel.